and to proclaim, look at the, la the first phrase of 19, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I stop here because we read the next three verses a moment ago where Jesus closes the book, sets down, says, today's this scripture is fulfilled in your ears, and everybody goes, wow. All right, so we got you right up to the wow moment. Look at this Jesus. This guy must be the one. Why are they so excited? Because if you're a first century Jew, you've been reading Isaiah 61 since you were a little bitty kid. You've been having this baby recited to you every Saturday in the synagogue, every time that reading comes around. And as they have read this, here's what you heard. Someday, someone in our future, in our proud family of believers, of proud family of God, our b circumcised bloodline, somebody is going to come along whom the Spirit of the Lord is going to rest upon. And when that guy gets here, he is going to heal the sick he is going to, he is going to open blinded eyes. Well, they, Jesus says he'll open blinded eyes, but they said he's going to set captives free. He's going to heal the brokenhearted. He's going to preach the gospel to the poor, and he's going to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. And we can't wait because we've been waiting on that acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord was what the Jews called Jubilee. And Jubilee was a promised event from Leviticus 25. Every 50th year in Israel, you were to repeal all debts and return property to its original owner. You will never hear, you'll hear a lot of sermons in the American church of stuff people think we ought to do because it's in the Bible, bless God. And you'll never hear one on Jubilee. And I'll tell you why you'll never hear one. Because the Jewish idea of Jubilee was if you buy a piece of property in the 50th year, it goes back to the guy you bought it from. Yep. So build accordingly. It ain't yours forever. If you bought it, you bought it credited against how many years were left in Jubilee. If you bought it on the 37th year of Jubilee, you only paid a 13th of the price because there was only 13 years left in Jubilee. So you didn't pay for the whole 50 years. You only paid for the next 13 years because it was going back. You, and also, all debts are canceled. Whatever I owe Jamie when Jubilee is declared, I don't owe Jamie anymore. Whatever Jamie owes me when Jubilee is declared, I don't owe Jamie anymore. You know how much evidence we have that Israel actually ever called a Jubilee in their history? Zero. Zero. Even though it's right there in Leviticus 25 that they're supposed to. We don't have any evidence they ever actually did it because it was actually too much even for them. They went, mm, I can't give this property up. Come on, man, I planted my, I raised my kids here. I can't give this back to the guy I bought it from. The guy I bought it from is a scoundrel. I can't let that guy go debt free. God's already not letting me charge any interest. That's another thing you'll never hear preached in the American pulpit. I, the guy's already not letting, God's not letting me charge him interest on the loan I gave him. Now you gotta give, now you gotta let him off scot free just because they've called a jubilee. So what happens is Israel begins to spiritualize Jubilee. And here's why. Because Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me for the anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and set at liberty those that are bruised and, set and open the captives' doors and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and how they interpreted that was. There's one coming who's going to be anointed by God to proclaim a national Jubilee. Okay, think like a first century Jew. Who, whose thumb are you under? The Roman Empire. Caesar, you don't have your own territory. You're in debt to the empire. And here comes your Messiah to declare Jubilee. So based upon the definition of Jubilee, what's going to happen to Caesar? He's going down. What's going to happen to the land? We're getting it back. What's going to happen to the debt you owe? No debt we owe. And Jesus goes, today is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And everybody goes, wow. We get what we paid for. All that blood, sweat, and tears, and persecution. This is the one that's going to give it to us. We, it belonged to Abraham. It belonged to Isaac. It belonged to... I got this in my heritage. I am owed this. And there's a general excitement in the room when Jesus goes, Today is it fulfilled? Because they thought, Yes! We've been waiting on the day it would be fulfilled. If this guy's the one, we get it all back. And somebody in the crowd goes, but isn't this Joseph's kid? 
And Jesus, I was, I was working, putting these final thoughts together today, and I thought, if Jesus could have just left well enough alone, right here, if he could have just went, yep, today, this is fulfilled in your ears, and just walked out, oh, what a ministry he could build. Oh man, he'd be packing out arenas. He'd be packing out arenas all over Rome if he could just let it rest. 